All right, it's been a long time since I've had an update for Josh over here. It's day 1009. Josh receives about only two hours of mid-afternoon sunlight per day. It's January 2018. And past about 3 p.m., 3.30, I think, the sun goes over that hill that you may have seen at the beginning of many of my plant clips and videos. So by 3.30 p.m. Pacific time, sun's over the hill and gone. And the sun doesn't really hit this balcony until maybe 1.30 at the best, uh, maybe 1 p.m. So that's about two hours. So as you can see, there are less warty growths on the newer leaves, the blades. And these bottom ones still look pretty nasty and warty. Uh, all these warts came about, well, they were always there to some extent, but there were a lot more of them. And I trimmed some of those uh, older blades away that were really crusty and ugly looking when Josh was on the balcony floor. When I had some of my succulents, such as the century plant, down there. But now that he's up here, it's a little uh, better. I think the amount of sunlight received is definitely very important. And we've got a lot of terrestrial algae or moss growing on there. Of course, I don't even know if Josh is female or male. I'm just... Uh, giving it a name and Josh seemed like the most logical name to give it so the blades look healthier there are more of them coming out from that funnel in the center and the wild dirt that I sifted on there seems to be doing its job holding everything in place so this is a weather report from February 2018 the fourth and as you can see this is very very atypical for Southern California even, it's just been a very dry winter. I remember having two days of rain and that's it. So on day 1017, I uh, did a little mirror check to see if the watering tray was dry. So I've actually been more generous with the watering for Josh. I've done lots of thorough waterings, deep waterings, until some water would start to drip down into the watering tray and then I'd stop and it's been a very good formula so the sunlight and the wetness of this uh, wild dirt on top have made it quite green it's uh, aesthetically pleasing aside from uh, a few dead blades of grass and the trunk looks a little bit more aesthetic as well because I did some pruning previously long before this episode and eventually as these uh, bottom leaves get older and start to fall down and uh, lose their color. I'm going to trim those too. So it'll have the look of some garden variety cycad or some other thing like a palm that's uh, neatly manicured and taken care of. Um, so for these blades in the middle I haven't clipped away the spikes on the end. You know, for the older ones that fan out I did because I kept getting poked. Sometimes they would draw blood and cause a lot of pain. But I think things are looking up. There's uh, more sunlight. The days are getting longer again, and I really look forward to that. So I think in another two or three months, Josh here will be receiving maybe four or five hours of sunlight. And eventually, around the summer solstice, maybe uh, seven, eight. You know, these things are supposed to receive maybe... I was thinking maybe 14 hours uh, of sun out there in Joshua Tree National Park and I just can't provide for a plant like this. But it's been pretty resilient. This is a very drought resistant plant. So during those times when it's been very hot during the summers, uh, Josh has survived very, very well. So it's day 1020. I can't believe it's been almost three years. It's almost... Uh, third year anniversary for Josh and I've decided to do a deep watering. I'm going to do this twice a month. I think during the winter, although when it gets really, really hot, it gets into the 90s and hundreds in maybe August and so on, or just maybe during the summer months, I'll start to water more frequently. And if you do deep waterings, which are said to be much better than uh, frequent shallow waterings. If you do them infrequently, I was thinking maybe once, 
every two weeks is a good frequency. Just divide up the month and do one at the beginning, do one in the middle of the month, and that's it. February is a shorter month. Other than that, there's not much difference. Maybe anytime it gets over 90 Fahrenheit for a prolonged period of time, I'll just uh, do it once a week maybe. It depends on the soil. If I see water collecting in the watering tray, then I'll stop. But I've had long periods of time in the past where the watering tray of Josh has been flooded and I just let him slowly drink away for weeks before all the water was exhausted until it was time to water again or sometimes I would let the dirt dry out. I think Josh has a large tolerance for both drought and overwatering at this point. The root system is fairly developed. It's not a root ball and I don't dare to just pull on the base of the trunk upwards to see if everything will come out of the pot because I think there's a certain amount of fragility um, with Joshua trees. So it's been unseasonably warm. This is a weather report from 2018, February the 4th. And it's been sunny every day, which has been great for Josh. I need a lot more sunlight than I'm able to provide. And this is in Celsius for those of you who don't live in the U.S. So it's been very uncharacteristic of even Southern California for it to be this sunny and warm. Uh, the warmth and the sunniness definitely help. Um, normally there's a marine layer, lots of clouds, and overcast days, and plants only receive one-tenth of the light they do of a sunny day like this. It's day 1033, and if you compare this footage to the beginning of the video, I think you'll notice there's been a bit of growth, although it's not a lot like it would be with other plants over a 100-day period. So the soil is like that because I rake through it with gloved fingers. I wanted to break up the congealed layer at the top, which was sifted wild dirt from the California chaparral, the hills, over potting mix, and it just congealed into this solid impermeable layer almost that takes uh, a long time for water to pass through when I water. So you can see the new blades in the middle, they haven't been trimmed, I didn't declaw them, but they're significantly longer than they were in weeks past or compared to the previous episode. So as long as there's continual growth of new blades from the middle, then I'm happy. I'm going to do some watering again. And I noticed in hindsight that this uh, raking of the top layer of soil didn't really do that much to make it more permeable. What I noticed, and in my other pots as well, I did this, was that the potting mix seems to have decomposed uh, quite quickly in the months following me sifting some wild dirt on top because I think a lot of uh, microbes were brought in, uh, little decomposers like moss and algae and whatnot and maybe many others that we don't know of, but it's also put a complete stop to the fungus gnat problem I once had in all of my pots filled with potting mix. And I think part of that was because there was a congealed layer at the top, so I always thought I was overwatering, and many of you did as well. But actually, this water takes a long time to pass through, so um, what happened was that the potting mix underneath was actually very dry. Many of the pots were very light when I tried lifting them up almost to the point of being bone dry. So in the case of my mango seedling, as I'll publish an episode maybe in a few weeks, it was actually dying of thirst. It wasn't dying from overwatering. So it was quite the shocking discovery. But I think in the case of the Joshua tree, it's very drought resistant. It's very heat resistant. And at this point, it's got a developed root system, so it doesn't fear root rot anymore. So this plant could basically take anything that um, I could throw at it in terms of different conditions, even if there are suboptimal conditions, whereas the non-succulent plants couldn't handle that, and some of them died or were on the verge of dying. So I think the growth has been slow and steady, and there's not much I can do. Um, I do plan on moving in a few months, so hopefully I'll get a place that has a lot more open sun if I can get a balcony or yard or something that can provide this with uh, 12 to 14 hours of sun a day. 
that would be amazing and I think the growth would be a lot faster.